Hey everybody, welcome back to the E3 hangar here at Bainian Air Service in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You know, we love all our aircraft, whether it's our Conquest II flying from here to Boston or coming back from Napa, California to Florida nonstop on some days. They're very great planes and they have a very specific mission. But when I get here and I wanna just go have a blast, the plane I'm jumping in is our Carbon Cub FX3. So let's dive in and do a full complete walk around. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the Carbon Cub FX3. So our Carbon Cub is a 2020 version. Um, only has a couple hundred hours on the engines and um, we'll do a full walk around, but I can tell you, it's gonna be very simple because that's the beauty of this aircraft. It is so simple. It's like a, a little Corvette. You just strap into it, step on the gas and go. So it's uh, just a blast, but there's not a ton to talk about. Now, the nice thing I love about our FX3 is it's got a lot of the new avionics, upgraded engines, LED lights, all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll do a quick walk around. And again, this isn't like detailed specifications. We just wanted to let you guys, all of our members, see uh, the aircraft that we're flying around. And, you know, the fun thing about this aircraft is exactly that. It's a blast. I mean, obviously, we're not using this plane to fly from, you know, here to Boston or anything. But, uh, you know, obviously, it's a bush plane. You know, it's more of a sport aircraft. We also use it for the guys right now that are behind the cameras. They're all uh, around us here and the audio guys and cameramen. And a lot of times we use this as like a chase plane or to get some of our aerial shots and things like that. So um, that's really the main thing that we use this for. A little bit of work and absolutely having a blast. So starting here on the wingtip, obviously this is a fabric covered uh, aircraft. So you got the aluminum structures and then you've got the uh, fabric on it. So here on the, we got our LED lights and it's a strobe and nav light all built into it. So here we have our first stall vane and the nice thing about this plane is uh, there's two stall horns in it. One is the one that's built into the aircraft, the one horn, and then we're going to talk about in a minute the other one that is built into uh, the Garmin G3X. And uh, so on our pitot tube, we also have a little tiny hole right here that also acts as the second stall horn. So if you've got one on the Garmin and you've got your indicator, and then you also have the horn that's uh, in the aircraft. So the FX3 is cable driven. Now the new uh, carbon cubs are all push rod driven inside uh, the struts. So here we have our, our cable system and um, we're not gonna do a, a full walk around on this. We're just giving you kind of the big view, but there's there are certain things we do and what we lube and things like that. Uh, on the aircraft, but we come back again to our lights. So these are our, our takeoff lights. Basically, these also strobe. So they will oscillate back and forth, which is great for the birds because, you know, a lot of times we're flying low. It's very rare that we even take this plane over a thousand feet. So uh, unless we're going a long way, but most of our flights are all under a thousand feet. So these lights are awesome, especially out here in the Everglades with those birds and things like that, that we have to be careful of and be cautious of. So these are pulsating lights. And then, of course, we got the rest of our struts and, you know, the windows both open on this aircraft. So you see both sides and we'll get in the cockpit in a little bit and talk about that. But now it's not advised to fly with both windows open. You certainly don't want to take off or land with any of the windows open, but you can fly with uh, at least one window open. Now, we found that, you know, we can't be up at 75, 80 percent power and trying to fly with the window open. It just doesn't stay that well. But most of the flying we're doing down here when we're flying up and down the coast at the beaches and things like that, we like to slow it way down and be like 70, 80 knots and, you know, it's no problem to have one of the windows open. And then again, our camera guys can be hanging out the side of the airplane and we'll show you a little bit of that and do some footage. We'll get up in the air and show you how that all works too. But all right, great. So let's walk around to the other side of the aircraft. Okay, so the Carbon Cob FX3, we're running the 185 horsepower uh, fuel injected engine and we do have the gammy injectors which is really cool so uh, if you want to look into those more check those out now i'm not going to get into a ton of specs on the engine but if you want go to carbon cub and check out all the specs if you want to know everything about this particular engine now we will cruise in this plane high speed cruise is you know about 115 120 the new nx cub that's coming is the 235 horsepower engine that one will cruise about 230 knots now uh, fuel in this we've got about 20 gallons um, we've got about three, three and a half hours of uh, duration on this, but you know, we really pull the, when we're flying this plane, we're out to have fun. So we're flying slow and low and really pulling the power. We'll, we'll get this down to under eight gallons uh, an hour, no problem, sometimes down to about seven gallons per hour. So that uh, gives us that little bit of extra, um, about six quarts of oil that go in it. 
And, um, you know, that's the, the basics when it comes to the actual uh, performance on it. Now, I will talk about weight, which is awesome on this plane. Keep in mind, these planes are, these are workhorses to get out in the, you know, out in the bush or up in the mountains and land in mountains and go camping. So we'll show you the back and how it's totally opened up, but you can lay tents and things in there and all kinds of food and, and extra weight. But, you know, this aircraft, no problem, is uh, 900 pounds legal that, that we can put in it. Um, and I know the uh, EX and stuff, they can, they get a little bit of variations and stuff. And then into the new NX Cub, we can put even more in that one. So for a small plane like this, two seater, 900 pounds useful is uh, just awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to now talk a little bit about the gear and the landing gear and the, the tires on this plane. All right, so we're running the Acme Aero upgraded uh, struts on this. So, you know, if we look at the whole suspension system here and things, we've got the the struts here, and then we're running the Behringer uh, brakes. So these are all upgraded brake system stuff. Now, what we don't have is, you know, a lot of times you'll see the safety cables on here. So like spreader cables, where it stops them from spreading too far. If you hit, you know, if you're up in the mountains or something, you hit hard. And we don't do that kind of flying down here in South Florida. So we don't have those. And uh, even though you can put a lot of weight on this thing, it just adds that little bit of weight, although they're not very much. But so we just have the very basic uh, gear system on uh, this aircraft. So. Let's talk about the tires a little bit. So Alaskan bush wheels. I mean, that's what makes this airplane so cool looking is I love these. And these are the 31 inch tires. And uh, the tires on these are, are very unique. And we can talk about them a little bit here, how they, uh, how they actually set them up. So if you can see inside here, it's all one piece. So it's not, uh, you know, a typical tire where it's two pieces and you kind of got to seat it and things like that. These tires are all one piece, and then this section here is not attached to the hub. The hub is allowed to spin in it. So when you do land or if you hit some, you know, brush or something like that and the tires happen to spin, they can spin right on the actual hub, on the actual wheel itself. So, and that's important that it's not attached to the rim, the wheel, because if it does and you have the stem going through the rim, like you had a traditional auto or some other airplanes and you land hard and the wheel actually twists on the rim, it would actually just break that stem. It would just tear it right off. So that's why these tires are made where they're all one piece. They can actually rotate and slide on uh, the actual rim. So that's kind of cool. And you can kind of see that here. And that's the other reason why the stem is actually built into the tire. So here's the stem. This is just there. This actually is, doesn't do anything. It's just sitting there. It actually doesn't fill the tire. The actual stem to fill the tire is up here built into the tire. Again, so when the aircraft lands and this happens to spin a little bit on the rim, obviously you're not tearing uh, the stem off it. So these tires are just awesome. It makes for such a sweet landing. You can roll over pretty much anything. We can roll over rocks that are, you know, six inches tall and you barely can uh, even feel them and you see the tire just absorb all that. Now we're, we're only running eight to 10 pounds in these tires, which is uh, surprising. But um, so again, great wheels. Unfortunately, they're really expensive. These are about $2,500 a tire, more than our jets. So it's a, a little crazy, but to be able to get this kind of performance and to go to places where nobody else can go, you, you need tires like this. Now, we just ordered these new tires and the difference in these, even though they are 31s like these, this has the extra treads on them. And you can actually see that here. They talked about, um, heavy tread is how they say it at Alaskan Bush Wheels. So the heavy tread gives it this, that little bit of extra rubber on here because, you know, we are here at the Fort Lauderdale Executive and uh, we do end up running, landing a lot on the concrete. So, you know, you don't want to, if you can't avoid it, that's great. You don't want to do spins on these tires or something because they will tear them up, but getting a little extra tread on them helps, gives you a little bit more because you know, you fly this plane a lot and concrete at a typical airport, you know, you're only going to get about a year out of these tires. Um, so this is the first time we're trying the heavy treads and uh, we'll see how these work. So let's go ahead and uh, go around the rest of the airplane. Here's the right wing, obviously the same as the other side we talked about. I just wanted to show you a little bit about how we kind of mount our cameras. And this is the Garmin 360 camera. Um, the reason I like this camera, and we do have GoPros and stuff too, other than the quality, which is just awesome, the Garmin cameras are awesome, they're a little expensive, but they are really good, is we can control this right from the Garmin panel. So inside the Garmin MFD, 
and PFD, we can actually just go in, hit record, control the camera, adjust the, the settings in the camera here, take pictures on the fly with the camera being way out here so I don't need to get to it and things. So we can control the whole Garmin system and all the Garmin cameras in this airplane right from the panel, uh, which is really cool for getting some of those sweet shots out over the ocean or up in the mountains. Um, okay, so again, same as uh, the other side of the, the aircraft. I mean, we got our typical flaps here and you know, everything is cables in this particular aircraft. And like we talked about in the new NX, the cables are, uh, it's all push pull rods that are throughout the aircraft. So you don't get to see all these, it really streamlines the plane quite a bit. Then we get our flaps and they come down and then done by hand. And when we get inside the aircraft, and when we fly it, you'll see that, but you can see a little handle way up top there with a little trigger on it. So when we pull that down, um, these go down to 40 degrees, which is, uh, gives you some really great slow speed characteristics. So other than that, I'm gonna go ahead, let's grab the keys and I'm gonna open up the back so we can look inside the back with a cargo. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about one of the great positives of this plane that I love is the cargo area. So we can get 60 pounds just in this little section right here. Now. If you take out the seat and the little molly thing we have in there with just a couple little pins, you can store tents, food, tons of weight all the way up to the back of the pilot seat. So you got all this area that you can fill with, with cargo and things. So, you know, right now we have the mollies in there and then when we get inside the cockpit, we'll talk about that a little bit. And then of course we have the sling seat in the back. But again, when that comes out, this opens it right up. So, you know, 60 pounds right here, great little access door. This is a nice little upgrade that uh, I really like. and. Uh, Let's go ahead and hit the tail. Okay, and then back here on the tail section, um, you know, of course we have electric trim. So here's your trim indicator uh, right here. And you got trim indicators on the panel as well, which is nice about the 2020 and the newer equipment in avionics. And again, everything is fabric on, on the back here as well. Of course we have our struts. Now for this particular plane, we didn't um, upgrade the tail wheel. We just have the standard Stinger tail wheel, but I know there's like, baby bush wheel tail wheels you can get in here and you can get them with a little bit better uh, suspension and stuff but this is fine for what we do again we're not up in the mountains and things all the time so that works well of course we've got our nav lights and our strobes again everything is a uh, cable and we see our springs and stuff down here now the supports you know this is kind of part of our walk around and you can see we got the the white indicators here to just check to make sure those that move. But I always check to make sure the tone on these, that one is a little bit higher than the tone on the bottom one. So I know you got a little bit more pressure on, on the top than the others. And then of course we have these gap sealers. So these just basically pull out, they're little rubber, rubber pieces you can slide in there and get a little more aerodynamic. Um, and then the rest of the airplane we talked about, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and let's jump and look inside the plane and go through some of the fun parts of the avionics and controls. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the cockpit. Um, it's pretty up to date. I mean, the Garmin G3X, you know, we do have uh, the new iPads in here. Uh, we do have some backup radios and things like that. And we can talk about, this is not the IFR panel. Um, so we looked to upgrade to the IFR panel. We just, for the kind of flying we do, we just didn't think it was worth it. Of course, we have the Garmin Autopot, new versions and, and things as well. So really cool panel. Of course, we got our throttles. We got our prop fuel tank down bottom, fuel indicators up here. Um, we also have uh, EPIRB that's sitting here as well. This is our flap handle and we talked about that a little bit and we'll go through that while we're in flight. Of course, we've got our Garmin camera up here, we've got our shades, and then up the top here that you can't see, but you'll see it in some of the flying videos, but these are little vents and things that you can control uh, from the see-through skylight here. So. Uh, the rest of it here is we've got our Bose headsets and also some other controls where you can flip the switch so that uh, who has priority on the trim here, whether it's front and back, that can be controlled here. So if somebody bumps it back here or they're hitting a button, it dis disconnects there as and it's always uh, up on the front that we, we're using. So we've got our iPad, the new iPad here, our fuel. I do want to talk about this switch, which is actually on right now. It's called the IBBS, Internal Battery backup system. Um, I love this. This is such a great uh, idea that they did here. And basically it's a separate battery that's separate from the master battery. So the master's off right now, but you get your, um, your MFD, your PFD actually coming up here. And it's nice because when you come in and do your pre-flight things, you flip that switch, 
everything boots up, everything's ready, so when you jump in the airplane after your plea flight, it's ready to go. You just hit the master and start, and you start rolling. Uh, the other nice thing is if you land and you're just doing some fueling or just running into the restaurant or something for breakfast or whatever, you can just keep that on. All your flight plan stays in there. Everything stays booted up. You know, it lasts quite a long time just on that internal battery system. And then what happens is when you flip your master and your uh, avionics on, the battery from the engine, the main battery, then charges that uh, backup battery back up. And then uh, again, you shut down, do some fueling, keep it on. And then again, you start up and it charges that battery back up. So, and then when it's actually charged up, it also, it doesn't run from that battery when your master and avionics is on. It actually changes over and runs from your main battery. But the point is, is if you do have a problem with your main battery and you lose your power, you still have your backup battery that you can keep flying. So it's a awesome little system. I really, really like how they did that. I think it's a great idea. And then underneath the seat is the main battery. And then of course we have some backup radios and things like that. And then got our RAM mounts for phones and key ignition system on, on the side there. So again, really simple, really simple system. We've got our stick here with uh, trim. We got our autopilot disconnect and push to talk here um, and love the new handles that they created. Of course, we've got the leather seat in the front here and then we have the sling chair in the back, which, you know, I thought the sling chair wouldn't be that comfortable, but everybody loves it. And what we did is we put a foam pad uh, upgrade on here. That's like a memory foam that we put on the seat. And then we've got a, a stick and of course throttles and prop for uh, people who fly from the back seat. And then their feet actually come way up here. So there's dual pedals and um, that's it. And it's uh, just a little bit of a blast of a plane. So I'm going to get to the other side. We're going to talk about the safety equipment and what we have in the, in the back here. All right. So just talk about some of the safety equipment we have uh, back here. Now up front, we talked about already that we have an inReach EPIRB. So that's there. Back here, we have our life vest. So there's two life vests here that uh, just pull these two tabs, the life vest drop into your lap. Uh, of course, we have a Leatherman tourniquet here and some accessories that goes with the tourniquet is right here. Of course, we got a first aid kit, strobe, strobe with a digital transmitter in it. Uh, we have a snake bite kit that's here. And uh, by the way, I think everybody should go check out some the right way to use snake bite kits because an actual snake bite kit isn't the ones you put a suction cup on and try to suck it out. That is definitely not what you want to do. So go to people that know what they're talking about when it comes to actual snake bite. Those little suction cups and things are more for spider bites or things like that, but uh, you do not want to use those for snake bites. So go do your own research and just know that uh, you don't, just having those with you is not good. Um, and then back here, of course, we have some extra water. We do have a micro start uh, battery uh, jump start. And really not for us as much as it's usually for other people. So we do have that little backup piece there, but this is just a nice little Molly system that's in here and that can just drop out if you wanna turn this whole area into cargo like we, we already talked about. Now also these are shoulders that come over the top for your seat belts and you got one for the front and the back. So that's a simple part of kind of what we got in here. So um, let's go ahead and jump in the airplane and go do a little flying. <music> Okay, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that walk around of our Carbon Cub FX3. Now, this aircraft is uh, holding us over until we get our new NX Cub, which we talked about a little bit here um, in this video. And by the way, make sure you go visit our Oshkosh video when we were with Carbon Cub and we reviewed all the aircraft there, especially uh, you'll get to see the NX Cub. But this is holding us over until we get ours. Now, if you're not one of our premium members, our E3AviationAssociation.com premium members, Make sure you come on over and join the community. There's just so much stuff going on and you'll get to watch the build out, 
the delivery of our NX, NX Cub and everything else that's coming along in the aviation uh, community. So we hope to see you over there as a premium member and uh, until the next time, we'll see you in the skies.